All right, so let me pull up the um, some charts. I'm gonna look at the NASDAQ chart to start. Actually, let me send it to my Thinkorswim because they give us better charting. While I'm opening this stuff up, um, Diana, anything interesting you've been looking at in the market? I know you've been doing some research. We're looking at charts. Looking at charts. I finally got the uh, the book yesterday. Mm -hmm. So just started reading a bit of it this morning. But just going over what you and I have talked about, like the oil, looking at the oil charts and stuff like that. That's it. Yeah. Any um anything interesting that you came across? No. <laughs> That's Still okay. struggling with the, the look-in. That's okay. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through those things more in detail in our one-to-one. -one. Yeah. yeah. Just bear with me as I'm... What do, you, what do you look like this week? Uh, we're going to get into that. But um, I've been doing... Um, copper i'm looking at copper i'm looking at gold i should have been bought gold but i've been a little uh shy on the trigger you know and mm -hmm. i'm kind of a little pissed off um but that was actually a great opportunity in gold mm -hmm. um you know i'm just sitting in this bond trade um what else do i have going on i'm also uh that's about it you know Cause I just feel like, just like we were saying with uh, with Will, this market is just so volatile. Um, you know, you just don't know what direction it's really going in. And I I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys on the charts, but um, okay. I feel like until I have a clear direction, you know, I, I kind of I don't really want to do too much. Yeah, I was trying to do some charting on the the fin bit, but it wouldn't allow me to do like anything. So I had to go over to like what is it, Trading View. Is it because I, I have the free setup with them that it won't allow me to mark on the chart? Oh, for Finviz? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start with the NASDAQ. All right, cool, perfect. So here we have the NASDAQ, right? And um, I think there's a couple things to note on this chart. Let me actually pull up the weekly chart. Let me actually just clear drawing. Right, so now we have a nice clean chart. There's a couple interesting levels. All right. Uh, so we have this, right? That was prior resistance, or I mean prior support that is now becoming resistance. We have this level over here, which was like kind of like a double top. some blue because that's a bigger time oh no and then we have this perfect all right so obviously you know the nasdaq is looking weaker right and this is just a weekly chart um now let's uh Bring it down to the daily chart. And now you see like 
we're in this and notice how you know this is now a support level this prior resistance level and you see like this the battle that's going on around here and i would say this is also another and this is a smaller level not as significant but i think it's just a level to still watch so you see we're getting all this price action um all this price action in here. And I feel like we either need to break above or break below to have a clear trend for what direction we're heading in, you know, but I'm kind of short bias. So I think we're going to break below, but I really want to see this, um, this level be broken and for us to hold cleanly below before I really get in there and short. There was a shorting opportunity up here, but I want to say um, sometimes when I'm looking at the NASDAQ, I'm, I'm thinking too much about day trading and I should have maybe just bought some puts on the SQQ on this pullback up here. You know, I mean, we could just, uh, I mean, buy some calls on the SQQ, not puts. And I just want to show you guys what that looks like. Feel me? Like I could have gotten in here, right? With kind of the floor being this right here, you know, and that's could have been a low risk, high reward trade. You know, we're going to see if this breaks above, but um, but we'll see. So let's just go back to the NASDAQ. I think that's just the first thing, right? Just just understanding um, what direction is the market heading in overall, right? And now what's driving this, this downturn in the, in the market? You know, there's quantitative tightening, meaning that the Fed is raising interest rates and they're cutting back on, you know, pumping money into the system. Um, we have a slowing economy. I think the US economy is expected to grow at like um, 2% or 3% for the next few years. You know, so we're expecting um, very low growth rates. Um, I think another headwind is um, earnings. Of course, they're, they're really good technology companies are putting out great results and still growing, but we're seeing a lot of companies that, and we spoke about this a lot in the past, that um, the, their revenue and earnings results um, cannot keep up with the high valuations, right? Like we saw PayPal get completely destroyed. Let's pull up PayPal. Jesus Christ, PayPal got completely destroyed. Um, we know Facebook got destroyed. Facebook is still going down. Wow. Um, what other names? Shopify got destroyed recently. Shopify was a definitely a darling during the pandemic shopify went from let's see this is like the lows of 2020 yeah all the way up to 1800 you know that thing got destroyed uh who else i think etsy got destroyed i wasn't etsy personally oh wow yeah when I, mean, I got out around here so i you know i, I got to keep some profits um but you, you see like all, all these companies, like, you know, they're going down and um, it's just a reflection of like, you know, the companies have extremely high valuations and it's just, it just gets to a point where, and you guys are getting to see that in real time now. So just pay attention to this, that uh, if the companies, you know, if, if they can't keep putting up, you know, triple digit um, revenue growth or, you know, 50%, 60% yearly revenue growth, and they have these like, you know, 50, 60 PEs, they're trading 30, 40, 50 times sales, you know, they, they, you got to put up the numbers or you're going to get destroyed on the street. Um, so just want to put that out there, right? So those are some headwinds, um, earnings expectations, you know, low growth expectations. Um, globally, most of the major central banks are also doing quantitative tightening, right? Like the ECB, um, um, the central banks in Latin America. I mean, China is not necessarily doing quantitative tightening. Um, as in like, they don't have to raise interest rates because their interest rates are already at 4% and stuff like that, but we don't got to get into the economics of all that. But I would just say like globally, it's not just the US, but it's the ECB, European Central Bank. Um, there's, uh, you know, London Central Bank. There's, uh, you know, all these different banks around the world are all doing quantitative tightening um, to try to, you know, slow down their economies. So that's that. Now I want to take a look at some commodities. Right. Um, I just feel like I know we're, we're talking a lot in the chat about like oil, gold, copper, 
And I focus on these things because um, I just feel like they are uncorrelated to the market right now. Um, let's see if we can just pull up a, a chart for you guys that he used. You see oil, right? Oil just climbing up. The market, the NASDAQ's having its volatility. The NASDAQ is crashing. The NASDAQ is still going down. And oil's just riding up and in a very clean trend. You know, let's take a look at gold. Same thing with gold. You see that? Like this thing is crashing and you know, having all this ups and downs, ups and downs. And this was just in a range and then it broke out of a range. And this is the trade I should have made. I should have bought gold around here and I didn't pull the trigger. Hopefully we get another pullback and I can buy some, but we'll see. Um, let's see, copper, I think copper is HG. Now copper is in its own consolidation and that's why I'm, I'm buying it. Um, you know, but even that once again, the S&P is, I mean, the NASDAQ is like crashing and this is just doing its own thing. And, and that's what you, I feel like where you want to be right now. You want to be in assets that are uncorrelated to the market. And then, you know, of course we have bonds. We could pull up bonds, right? Like, uh, so there's an element of this was correlated with the market at this time period, but that's because, um, it was rising interest rates that were making the market crash. So that makes sense. But besides that, you know, um, this thing is kind of moving on its own and not moving with the market. And we could even maybe take it down to like an hourly chart so you can even see that better. Uh -huh. uh, you guys won't get to see that better. Um, all right, maybe this is not the best way to put, present it for you guys. Um, but yeah, so those, those are some of the things I'm looking at. And I, and I think that's what I'm going to be focus on, focusing on this week. Um, so on yesterday, I actually pulled the trigger on copper. Um, I bought some calls on FCX. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me also get rid of this. So this is FCX, um, you know, I'm looking to play the breakout above the all time highs. I believe these are all time highs. Let's just double check. Okay, so it's not quite all time highs. Um, oh crap. My thing stopped sharing. Sorry about that, guys. Let me get back to sharing it. Yeah, so I'm looking for, you know, this would be great if this thing can get up to 60, right? So that's another thing too with um, with commodities, gold, oil, copper, um, even steel, aluminum, all, all these things have rising prices. So this is a lot of supply and demand issues, right? Where there's just, you know, because of like, you know, economies, and I know it's been two years, but the economies are still technically getting back to work. Um, you know, there's a lot of demand for raw materials, um, and there's just not enough supply out there. You know, of course there's tons of copper in the ground, but in terms of like, you know, readily accessible copper, et cetera, you know, there's like a supply demand. I think to, I, I was reading something like, you know, I forgot the, uh, the metric unit that they use, but there's something like, you know, uh, 28 million of whatever the metric is that is in demand currently for the year 2022. And then there's only like 20 million available, right? So there's like an 8 million gap between what's available for copper and what people need you know so that's you know supply and demand 
Um, another thing I think is also with oil. I think um, currently the demand that is ex expected to be almost something like um, 9 million barrels or something like that. And the, um, the oil producers are only producing like 7, mil 7 million barrels of oil. Um, so I think it's like 9 million barrels per day are demanded while only 7 million barrels per day are being produced you know, globally. So there's a lot of supply and demand issues and that's why commodities are doing um, so well. Uh, let's actually just take a look over here so we can just see all of them or a lot of them. Take a look at metals. Uh, let's do weekly, monthly, maybe. So you see like gold's in this nice consolidation. Um, gold, I have to do some more homework, but there's also like, you know, um, a lot of demand from central banks. I really wish I bought that base. Um, even silver, I got to do some homework maybe around silver's demand um, and supply, but that might be something interesting to look at. This is copper. Copper's chart looks phenomenal to me. You know, this is nice, strong, standing upright consolidation. You know, for me, this is like a no brainer right here. Um, food inflation, maybe, and, and I feel like this is something I, I maybe don't even talk about enough, but this might also be a another another trade you know like just trading these uh food futures right soybean looking good um oats looking good canola's looking good corn is nice and strong soybeans are strong wheat is up let's see meats you know um meats are up uh what a sauce yep cotton is up coffee is up you know all, all these things are up that's interesting lumber really rebounded um, the people are talking about now there might be a paper shortage, which is interesting, and that might be another thing to look at, you know, so um, so these are kind of the things that I'm looking at. I really just want to find uncorrelated trades where regardless of what the NASDAQ is doing, you know, these things are moving on its own. And the whole supply and demand thing, um, I just feel like is a stronger market driver than the market itself. Um, so with that being said, like I said, that's kind of what I'm focusing on. Just uh, maybe I'll just stop to like let you guys ask any questions or um, you know give any feedback. If anybody does have any questions. Okay, no questions. I know we went around the room a little bit. I maybe just want to ask um, Andrea anything good that you're looking at in the market or trading. Nothing that you haven't mentioned. Okay. That makes sense. You're looking at the same things then. Um, uh, did, you, did, you did you trade anything interesting this week? Oh, well, this week, actually, the, the NQ um, futures, because it was just a strong trend. So um, I took the easy way out. Oil took a little dip. Um, mm hmm I have a, I'm in the oil ETF. It's still doing well. It, it bounced a little bit, but I still think that there's a, you know, there's still enough reason to stay long on it. Yeah, no, I think oil has some good drives. Once again, they have the whole supply and demand um, issue that's, that's going on. And, um, you know, if this Ukraine stuff continues to pick up, then that's definitely going to send oil, you know, through the roof. Yeah, and, and they're apparently targeting, oh, I don't know who's targeting it, but, uh, you know, there was a couple, there were a couple of places that caught fire. I think that's going to also af affect the supply. Um, so I still believe that, you know, we'll still have supply demand imbalances. Yep, no, that's fair. And you know, I want to pull up this chart on oil too. I just want to show you guys because this is a, also was a great breakout trade. Um, let's see, day four hours. So you know, this was a consolidation. I really should have bought this consolidation, you know, and I, I missed that trade. You know, oil broke out. It consolidated again above this so that's a great you know consolidation I, I should have bought this again and those and all this and i and i feel like you know maybe come monday i'm just gonna hop in oil like you know because oil is clearly respecting the level and um and now this is like a low risk high reward situation right let's pull up uso
you know, this floor of 63, it's 65, 16. Right, so now, you know, if I got in here, I'm only risking two points to potentially make, you know, 10 points, 20 points, 30 points, right? Because um, we're, we're looking at uh, potentially $100 barrel oil and above. Um, let me go back to this. And, you know, and if this war really does break out, um, you know, oil could go, you know, who knows how high that's thing could go, right? Could go to 110, 120. You know, only only God knows how, how this thing could go. Um, I think I think oil is going to be very interesting, and I, I'm definitely looking to get in uh, with some calls. Are you in calls, or you have shares, Andrea? I have calls. Cool, cool. Okay, yeah. Um, so I just feel like I don't have too much to say regarding the market outside of what I said. Right, it's like we're just in this weird space right now let's maybe even take a look at the um s p 500 charts and, and that's just a good um habit for you guys to develop you should always be looking um at the major indexes indices s p 500 dow jones and you know looking you know what are the important levels this is looking like a a good level right here to watch for um let's bring this down actually let me just edit this make that blue i make my um longer term levels a different color so when it's coming into it i know oh okay this is a bigger level in case you guys are wondering why i keep doing that you know this is setting up for a nice little breakout actually you know i think if yeah if we if, we, if we're able to crack this level this might be a nice <laughs> Let's see what the Dow is doing. Same thing with the Dow. Edit properties, blue. Got on the left. So yeah, like you know, like everything is setting up for a trade. The Nasdaq, S and P five hundred, and um. And the Dow. So I, I would say this week, you know, pay attention to these levels and, you know, let's see what happens. Let's see if we have more selling pressure. And if we do, I think um, if we break these levels, you know, I think we might we might be trending lower for some time. Um, so that's my thoughts. Um, Are you really going to Virginia? Okay, Virginia. okay there we go. Um, all right, so so that's all I have to say for today. Um, before we wrap up, I thought like this is a little bit of a short session, but there's just not too much going on. I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of sitting on my hands until I have a really clear direction on the market. Um, but before we wrap up, any last questions, thoughts, feedback? Yeah, I just had an observation. It mm -hmm. just sounds like uh, with everything going on, that oil might be the number one safe and profitable trade with the highest um, chance of doing well right now, right? Because if um, if war breaks out, all does well, war doesn't break out and the economy is recovering as it is and um, oil is going to do well also. Um, I agree with your thesis on that. Um, but only thing that I would say though, is that I feel that, um, copper is the better trade than oil i feel like copper has less volatility um copper is not caught up in a geopolitical crossfire and um and copper has some real supply demand issues um just because like you know once again with the economy recovering and the um even bigger demand for us to switch from fossil fuels that means you need more copper and more silver um to create products that are electrical as opposed to stuff that runs on fossil fuels or you know, gas or whatever. Um, so that's my two cents. I think copper is better and safer and has bigger upside potential um, than uh, than oil. But I don't know. What do you think, Will? I'm just comparing um, the factor of this war happening. Would that affect copper? You know, I think it's something I've been thinking about. Um, it, it might affect, I mean, I don't think it's gonna affect copper production or copper demand, but it might 
affect, um, you know, I, I, I think we have to wait to see, like, you know, how copper prices react to the war. And maybe I have to go back and do homework and see how have copper prices react to previous wars. You know, I, I think this one is a tough thing to um, to say because I'm I'm worried that if um, if we do go to war, right, um, you might just see um, a sell off across the board. You know, I think there might be commodities like gold, silver, and oil that still go up because of the war, but you might see other commodities get sold off not because there's any real issue, but just because um, you know just there's a market sell off. Um, so that's my two cents on copper, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I think I got to go do some history um, and, and see. You know, yeah. I, I was wondering if uh, just oil is definitely um, impacted, but it's almost tangential. I think, uh, I think gas is probably going to be the most affected by this conflict because um, Russia, Ukraine, that pipeline is really a, a gas pipeline. So even though I've been in oil, I really want to explore gas. You know, um, I think you're thinking correctly, you know, um, and yeah, you know, we could, we could definitely look at gas. Let me take a, a quick look at the gas futures. I know they have them on Finviz. Are there any gas stocks you're looking at or are there any um, gas ETFs you're looking at? Well, I was looking at the most obvious ones like Exxon Mobil and um, what's the other one, you know, uh, I think there's one COP, I forget what the name is, Conoco. but um, I think that's Conoco Phillips actually. Conoco Phillips, yep, that's COP. Um, but I haven't, I haven't explored, I was looking at gas futures too. Um, I don't really know how it moves, so I was just kind of studying it. But, um, you know, I was waiting for a pullback on those. It looks like it might it might have had a little pullback to enter because it's just been going so high. Um, which one? Well, specifically, I, I looked at ExxonMobil. It, did it have a pullback recently? A little bit. I mean, a very small pullback. It had this pullback from 82 to 77. Yeah, that might be, it might be a good time to enter. Yeah, I'm actually thinking the same too. I I'm I'm yeah. just these calls a I think probably both gas and oil will do fine, will benefit from uh, current conditions. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, the, I mean, the calls are liquid. I mean, the options are liquid on this. I mean, that makes sense. So, I mean, this may, let me see uh, further out. Yeah, you know, the stuff further out is liquid. So, yeah, I might, I might hop in this ExxonMobil. Um, so, I like that dip. And, you know, they're, they're pretty safe. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think we can wrap up here. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, you know good, good job this week. I feel like you guys are slowly getting more and more active. Um, I think what I want to do is maybe start um, picking a company for us to research just to like, you know, keep you guys on your toes with the fundamentals, right? We did all this learning of fundamentals. But I just feel like um, I'm personally maybe not trading stocks or not covering fundamentals, but I wanted to maybe research um, Facebook as a group next week. I think Facebook could be interesting. Um, you know, they're in a transitionary period where they're trying to transfer from one industry, right? Being this um, social media like player with Facebook and, you know, Instagram and WhatsApp and all that good stuff. And now they're trying to, become like the apple of the metaverse right they want to create all the infrastructure and they're also creating that digital the, the actual metaverse but they're creating the oculus headset and all that stuff you know they create the infrastructure and um i think that's something interesting to analyze right you know there, there might be um an undervalued play in facebook and it, i mean it's not necessarily the state of by facebook today let me just uh pull up their their numbers 
Yeah, Facebook right now has a PE of 14. Um, they're trading at four times sales. Um, they're trading at four times their book value. So that's not bad at all. Um, cash per share, they have $16 um, cash per share. They have a quick ratio of 3.2. Uh, so that means for every dollar in short-term liabilities, they have $3.20 in cash. That's good. So you know, they, they're cash rich. They have good valuations relative to their industry. And um, they're still growing. Um, earnings were up 36% this past year. Um, sales quarter over quarter is up 22. I mean, excuse me, is up 19%. So I, I actually want to look at Facebook as a group. And they have good margins too. Um, gross margins is 80%. Operating margins is 39.6%. Profit margin is 33.4%. So they're a growing company. They're stepping into, um, they're looking to dominate a new space of the metaverse and virtual and, you know, VR and AR. Um, so I think, I think this might be something interesting to just, you know, do a deeper dive on. What do you guys think? Yeah, 100%. Sounds exciting. I it think that sounds like a good, good idea. idea. Yeah. 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 On um, just the valuation of metaverse would be a cool thing to do as part of this as well. Yeah, you know, I think, um, and that's something to reach. I mean, I wouldn't say the valuation of the metaverse, but I would more so say, right, uh, how big is that market opportunity, right? How big is the market opportunity to sell AR, VR products, right? Um, you know, how many products were sold this past year for that industry combined and where are they looking for that to go? Um, and then I think the other part, which is really hard to figure out um, or to predict, but there's also, you know, there's, there's Facebook, and this is a what also I feel like I missed about with Apple years ago. Um, I, I just didn't understand this, right? But there's, I just use Apple as an example, right? There is selling the physical devices, and that's one way that Apple makes money, right? But then Apple also makes um, uh, 30% on every dollar that goes to their app store, you know? Um, that's how they make money off the apps, right? So even with um, a slowdown in the growth of phone sales, if there's more like activity with people downloading apps, spending money on their apps, um, buying services through the apps, whatever, um, you know, the, 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 the revenue growth is just exponential. And I think we might see that too with the metaverse, right? It's not just selling the Oculus devices, but then once people are actually in the metaverse, right? All those transactions that are happening, I'm sure um, Facebook is going to be getting um, pieces on that, you know. So, um, so yeah. So just just to expand on what you're saying, well, I think we, we need to really look at the overall market opportunity, um, the outlook for the market, and and where that growth is going to be, you know, and and what's realistic. Um, so yeah. So. Yeah. So I'll um I'll get the um like the 10k and the 10 Qs organized for you guys and I'll send that in an email um and then you know we'll we'll meet up again next uh, Saturday and, and we'll talk about Facebook more in detail just so we have something you know tangible to sink our teeth into on the Saturdays to keep you guys on your toes. You know, there's one other thing that I think we should think about with Facebook while we're exploring the opportunity. They also have um some headwinds around their advertising revenue. So I wonder how much of their profit margin is related to advertising because they were um, uh, limited by both the um, Apple and what's the other one? So one is iOS. And Android. And Android, yeah. So they, oh, no, no, I, it's, not, it's not Android. It's Apple and Google. I think limited their ability to track data on their platforms. So that might make them take a hit on their advertising revenue. So, so, so the metaverse opportunity would have to be bigger than the loss on their advertising revenue. Um, you are correct. And, and I think that's why Facebook is transitioning. Um, so I wanna say Facebook already took that loss on, on the advertising revenue, so we, so we can analyze that, right? That's why Facebook's that stock is down so much um, because they took a, a huge loss on advertising. So I, I don't know what the numbers are, but we'll, you know, I know once we go to the, the quarterly reports and the, um, the annual report, you know, we'll get some, a clearer picture around that. But I think you're asking the right question. Um, but I'm sure 
that the market opportunity for the metaverse and just all the revenue opportunities around it is, I'm sure is far greater than what they're losing, right? And I, and I just wanna say strategically, um, Facebook is moving into the metaverse and getting away from all the social media stuff in the first place for these exact reasons, you know? Um, and even like competition from like TikTok, you know, they, they really mentioned that like, you know, TikTok is hurting their sales, you know, they're getting even more aggressive I think they're doing something like um, if you are an influencer, um, which is actually interesting if you're an influencer on um, Facebook's platform. So I guess Instagram influencer or Facebook influencer, um, you can now get paid $1,200 a month for every million views you get on your post or every million impressions you get on your post. Don't quote me on that, um, on the number, but I think it's something like that, right? So Facebook is also um, very aggressively trying to retain the large influencers. And I think for small people like us, right, we'll never get to those million um, impressions, right? But you have someone like Kim Kardashian, she probably gets like 500 million views in a month. I'm actually now curious to, to do the math on that. Kim Kardashian might be making some serious money off of um, Facebook. 500 million times 1,200. Oh wow, that's um. And maybe maybe they have to cap it at some point because um, this comes out to like six hundred billion or some shit, some shit like that. <laughs> so I gotta look into this. Um, so that's a, another thing to look into, right? Um, how Facebook is trying to retain influencers. Um, and I know they're doing this. Maybe they have a cap on it, you know, because that's not sustainable. Because yeah, you have people with huge platforms like Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, where I'm sure, like you know. They, they get like hundreds of millions of impressions. You know, they have like 50 million followers. How many followers does Kim Kardashian have? Um, yeah, Kim Kardashian has 286 million followers. So they, they got to have a cap or Kim Kardashian is going to bankrupt the company herself. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're going to work on Facebook. I think you guys are asking the right questions, and I think this should um, should be an interesting exercise. So yeah, so with that being said, you know, thanks for joining me as always. You know, thanks to you guys for uh, wanting to invest in yourselves and learn more. And um, I'll see you guys next Saturday. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Jeff. All right, speak soon. Bye.